Hello, this is uh, V7XH, name is Chris, and I'm going to run through the new features of this new uh, 1.100 release for the IQ32. Uh, so what I've got in front of me here is a, uh, uh, the IQ32, and when we power it on, if we look at the top of the screen, we'll see that this is the original 1.000 uh, factory release. So to update this, let me just turn down that volume there. Uh, what we do is we get a USB flash drive and we take the image which is in the zip, unzip it and put it in the top level root directory of the flash drive. And then we can put the flash drive in the USB port at the side. We power it off and then while holding down the uh, encoder uh, for the frequency um, uh, uh, side, uh, we power it on and when it powers on we'll get a blank screen and then uh, 15 seconds late, later after it's loaded the image it will boot up and go straight to the uh, the normal splash screen and we can see this is 1.100 and it'll take a few seconds to update the internal memory before we go into the regular mode so let's just switch to uh, see USB and we'll turn down the volume a little bit so you can hear me uh, so at that point we can take this out and uh, uh, I'm going to be using a keyboard, so I'll put the keyboard, a uh, little dongle in for the keyboard, and then uh, we can get that working. All right, so let's uh, run through some of these uh, new features. Uh, so the first thing is uh, non-volatile storage. Uh, so I change this uh, memory one uh, to USB. If I go change it, so uh, say memory, let's try memory 14. Uh, it's also USB. Let's go to something like PSK, uh, one of these memory, uh, and then go back to memory one. Then that's still at USB, still at uh, 5600. Uh, so the mode uh, remained the same. If I change the frequency, so let's go to uh, 3570. Again, we'll go back to one of these other uh, memories and then go back to memory one. It's now at 3570. Uh, so uh, anything that's changed uh, in any of these uh, uh, these memories is preserved. When we go back to that memory location, uh, it's exactly the same as it was the last time we were there. And uh, the I've also changed the uh, the labels on these uh, because it was confusing to call them, say, C 80 meter CW when uh, we've just changed that to now USB. Or it could uh, we could change the frequency and make it uh, uh, 40 meters. Um, so rather than um, making it uh, specific, um, uh, I've just got a generic label. And of course, you can change these labels by editing them. So if we select uh, Edit and then uh, select the label, uh, it shows M01. And if we wanted that to say uh, as it did before, 8 meter C CW, uh, we would take out some of these characters, put in 80 M, what happened to the 8? 80 M CW, and uh, if I hit enter, then it goes down to the next one M02, so I can uh, edit that one. Oh, I missed the space. Let me go back, just go up arrow, and put in the space there. Now it says 80 meter CW. Uh, so now when we uh, go out of edit mode, select that. Uh, now this is where the confusion occurs because even though the label says 80 meter CW, we had changed the mode to USB. So if we wanted that to always be CW, or at least for now make it CW, then we'll have to change it back to CW. Um, so those settings are preserved when we uh, change those memories. Um, the other thing, of course, uh, well, maybe not of course, let's change uh, over here to another uh, frequency. Uh, so we're now on, uh, what's this, 20 meters CW. Uh, it's also preserved when we power the power device off uh, and pa power it back on again. So I'm going to power it off. When I power on, uh, it used to be that we would always go uh, boot up into memory one. Now, when you power on, it will go into the mode that we were in last time, so this is now still M13. And then if we go back to uh, memory one, that is still at CW and we're still at uh, 3570. 
so everything's preserved uh, both when we change it um, in memory uh, while it's running and also when we power it off it's that uh, all that data is saved in non-volatile memory in the uh, uh, WDEPROM and it's restored uh, back uh, when we power on into normal operation. Uh, that also goes for the filter settings. So here we are in CW, maybe we want a narrow filter. We'll take uh, the filter down, make it really narrow. And then uh, again, if we switch to another band, say PSK, we're over here, go back to CW, it's now uh, that filter is preserved. And again, if we power it off and back on again, it will power on and the filter is set as it was before. Uh, so this is really useful if you want to operate on two different bands and you say want to have uh, settings on one band and a different set of settings on a different band you can quickly switch say between uh, here we are in CW mode on uh, 80 meters and maybe you want to go into PSK mode on uh, what are we on here 40 meters and we want to look at uh, voice uh, upper sideband on 20 meters and then we can go back and the settings are still the same on CW um, back where we were. Uh, so that's all about these, I call these memory buttons, I used to call them frequency buttons, but uh, really they're just memory buttons. Um, uh, also all of the settings are non-volatile. You've probably heard when I powered it on, uh, we didn't get blasted with the audio because we turned the, uh, the volume down to um, uh, 32 here and uh, uh, whatever we set whatever we, uh, we we set on any of these settings say the RF gain uh, RF gain is set to 32 let's wind that down to say 50 actually we can't wind it down to 50 oh, yes we can there we go wind it down to 50 uh, oh that's AF gain <laughs> Okay, let's make uh, AF gain 42, let's make the RF gain, let's make that say 50, take it down to, there we go, 50. Uh, so those are now pres preserved, and if we power it off, power it back on again, we'll see it will power on. The AF is still at 44, and the RF gain is still at 50, where we set them previously. So all those uh, uh, settings are preserved. Um, also, when we're talking about uh, these gain settings, uh, previously we had some odd numbers for the AF gain. It went from uh, minus 170, 127 to plus 48, uh, which I found really confusing. So I've now normalized these to be percentages. So AF gain runs from zero all the way up to 100. And previously the uh, the default, which was zero, uh, corresponded to a level of uh, of uh, around 70. Uh, so the uh, uh, the factory default is now uh, 70. Uh, so the volume should be the same as it was before. Um, uh, it's just that the, the number it will show as a percentage rather than this obscure uh, code that was, uh, was being used to uh, program the internal hardware. Um, while we're in these modes, we can change, um, uh, or in these memory uh, uh, functions, let's go to another memory, memory two. Uh, we can change mode. Uh, so we could make this USB, we could make this, uh, make this PSK. Um, and as I say, those are preserved. Um, we also have on here tune, and this is used to tune up the radio. If we select tune, Previously, we wanted to go back to the, the mode we were on, uh, we would have to select that mode. Now we can use tune as a toggle, so if we hit it a second time, we go back to the mode that we were operating in previously, just in case you forget where you wanted to go. Let's go, say, back to CW there. Um, also, tune now operates at full power. Uh, the power level was a little bit lower uh, the way it was being generated previously. Uh, now it's the same power as we get uh, uh, on on CW. So uh, it'll be full power if you've got the uh, the uh, transmit level up high. Um, whatever the, the power level is set, 
for CW or normal operation is the same power that we'll get while we're in tune mode. Um, maybe look at the advanced settings now. Uh, so in advance, uh, we see quite a few changes here. Uh, there used to be two columns of buttons. Uh, we've now eliminated uh, all of the buttons that were on the first column here uh, and replaced them. And those were used for the gain and balance for the IQ signals. Let me turn this volume down. Um, and that was necessary for uh, some of some of the boards where um, it wasn't balanced. Uh, the board that we're now using in the IQ32 uh, doesn't require those settings. And it was confusing to have them there, so uh, we've taken those out. But we've got a couple of new buttons. One is the key mode, and the other is the frequency calibration. I'll talk about key mode when we get onto CW in a moment. Uh, but the frequency calibration is, uh, if we select that, we can then adjust the local oscillator by uh, a number of parts per million. So this is this represents parts per million, and I haven't done a calibration on this radio, but um, on my other radio it was out by eight parts per million, uh, and we go positive or negative on that. So uh, you need to figure out how to do your your own calibration. But uh, if you know what your uh, parts per million are, you can just set that on the display here uh, with the frequency calibration. Um, I've also moved a couple of these buttons around over on this side here. Uh, previously the uh, screen calibration was up at the top and the problem with that was when we selected advance sometimes people would, um, would, uh, would tap twice or hold down the tap and it would invoke the screen calibration uh, which obviously you didn't want. So by moving those out it, we, uh, if we select cal and we accidentally press in that area it doesn't do anything that uh, we didn't want. Uh, what else have we got? Um, okay, let's talk about factory reset. Uh, if uh, since the um, all of the adjustments, the memory buttons and the settings are um, uh, off, uh, are you can change them and they are stored in memory and it's not volatile memory. Uh, if you ever wanted to go back to the original factory settings, we can just hit the factory reset and that will uh, reprogram all of those settings, all of the buttons back to how they were originally. And then uh, at the end of that, do a reboot and this is back as it was, uh, default values. And all of these values are exactly as um, uh, they were originally. Let's turn the gain down again. So now let's uh, move on to the uh, CW, which is really the main uh, set of features that have changed here. Uh, so uh, previously what we had was um, uh, just a straight key. You can hear the side tone there. Maybe turn up the side tone a little bit so we can hear that a little bit better. Uh, so if I hold down the key, then we just uh, uh, transmit a carrier and release the key and it goes back into receive mode. So that's how it used to be. Now on the advanced screen over here we can change the key mode and we can use a paddle um, and uh, various modes of paddle. So uh, with a iambic key uh, we can uh, select uh, that either mode A or mode B. Uh, so let's select mode A. Uh, so now if I hold down the uh, what was the, the tip um, on that jack uh, which was the uh, the straight key, we now get a series of dits, and if I hold down the, the ring on that jack, we get the DARS. And if we hold down both keys, uh, both paddles, it alternates uh, didar didar. Uh, the difference between mode A and mode B is uh, when we hold down both, uh, both paddles, uh, in mode A, when we release the paddles, it stops immediately. In mode B, it finishes the symbol and then transmits the opposite symbol. So if we release the key when we're holding down the DAR, then it finishes the DAR and then we get an extra DIT. Uh, also, uh, some people like uh, the feel of uh, some of these more mechanical uh, key, uh, mechanical uh, paddles. 
um, or keys. And uh, we uh, allow waiting uh, to be applied to the, the keying. So if I go to uh, wait uh, to select three, which is waiting on the DARS, uh, this has a feel of a bug. So if I go back now, I'm going to change the, the waiting. Uh, a value of one represents um, uh, 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 no extension of the, the DARS. Just straight um, uh, straight timing of uh, three times the, the dit length on the DAR. Uh, if I adjust that up to 15, then we extend the DAR by a factor of 1.5. And we can take that down to uh, 7, which represents 0.7, shortening the, uh, the DAR a little bit. So we can adjust this and uh, make it sound a little bit like a bug. Uh, the other mode, let's go to advance, key mode, is waiting both the dit and the DAR, uh, which is like a win kia. And uh, when we do that, uh, I'm going to go back to the wait. Now when we wind this up to extend it, it extends both the dit and the DAR, or shortens it. And of course, the uh, uh, while we're extending the uh, the period of the dit and the dar, we're also reducing the gap size, so we're maintaining the uh, the same um, same speed. Let me go back. Actually, let me take off the weight completely, which we can do here. Go back to uh, let's go back to say mode two, which is I think what a lot of people might prefer, and uh, go back to speed. So right now we're operating at 12 words a minute, and uh, that's a significant improvement on what we had previously, where this uh, radio uh, didn't seem to work much better than seven words a minute. Uh, but now we can uh, not just go at 12 words a minute, we can widen that all the way up to 35, 35 words a minute, and it works very well. Uh, and um, just to demonstrate that on the radio, uh, let me take out the side tone and switch on the radio and listen to it on the radio and you can hear it it sounds good at that speed on the radio okay uh, so that's uh, the main mode of CW um, let's look at the keyboard now uh, so right now I'm using a USB keyboard uh, we can also use a um, a PS2 keyboard. If we use a USB keyboard, it has to be a high-speed keyboard, and uh, that's what I have with this uh, wireless keyboard. Uh, this is actually a Logitech, uh, sorry, Logitech MK270, which uh, one of our users recommended uh, since uh, it works well. Uh, some of the, um, uh, well, all of the low-speed keyboards. Um, uh, don't work reliably uh, with this uh, with this interface. Okay, so with this uh, uh, with this keyboard or with a keyboard, uh, we're in CW mode. We can type on the on the keyboard and generate uh, Morse code. Let me take the speed, see what speed we're at. Let's say take it down to about twenty. <coughs> so typing on the keyboard. Uh, I turned down the side tone, let me turn that back up again. So we can type CW on the keyboard. We can also make use of the uh, the functions which have pre-programmed sequences. So before I do that, really what I have to do is edit those sequences and make sure they're what I want. <coughs> Okay, so um, let's go to edit the keyboard functions. Uh, so this is the call sequence. And you see it says, uh, uh, this is a function saying, go on to transmit, send the uh, CQ, CQ, CQ of, and then my call, which is a, uh, I'll call this a tag, that we'll edit somewhere else, and uh, please K, and then go back on to receive. Uh, so I need to edit, um, my call, uh, well you can edit the text here if you want, but uh, the correct way of doing this is to 
edit the tag for my call and uh, if I go back uh, what do I want to do I want to done there we go I want to edit tags so these are the tags so this is my call tag down here it, the factory default is just a1 bcd I'm going to type in my call which is ve7 xh and while I'm here I'm going to change my name to Chris done so now if I hit uh, the F1 key uh, what will happen let me just go and show you what uh, F1 is again the keyboard functions F1 will send that sequence substituting my actual call sign for where it says my call to hit F1 Okay, uh, so that was the CQ sequence. Now uh, we also have a back to you sequence. Uh, so let's have a look at that. The keyboard function for F5 is back to you, and this is what we send uh, for back to you. Again, transmit well station name. So that's the name of the person that we're talking to. Back to you, uh, my station call sign, my call KN, and then to receive. <coughs> Pardon me. <coughs> Um, so where we get the station name and the station call is here on the main screen. So while we're in our QSO, we're sending CW, um, we know the name of the person we're talking to and his call sign, we can just hit CS for call sign. Oh, sorry, I hit the um, wrong button there. Uh, call sign. So I want to talk to my buddy Dave. Uh, his call is VE7HR. And his name is his Dave. I'm going to type those in here, and then when I hit F5 for the back to you se uh, back to you sequence, then it substitutes in what we typed for his name and call sign and my call sign. Uh, so as well as um, the. Uh, keyboard functions and the tags. Uh, we can also change the screen functions just while I'm here on this advanced screen. Uh, so these are the uh, the keys that are at the bottom of the screen and each of these has a, a, a function code uh, which is executed when we press the button on the main screen. Uh, so this AGC, uh, the code for that is an X AGC which means next AGC and so it will cycle through the list of AGCs um, when we uh, are on that screen. Uh, so that's here we change the AGC, digital, SSB, AGC off and so on. So we want to use uh, or program a different um, function for these buttons we can and we can change the label. So over here, uh, where are we now? The screen function, uh, if we hit that we can change the code and we hit tab on the keyboard, there we go, uh, we can change the label and tab again goes back to the uh, the code or the function code. Uh, one more thing to point out is um, uh, a fairly minor change, you probably see I've now got leading zeros here and this is really just to make um, it easy for operation of uh, of this radio as a um, IF into a transverter by setting an offset uh, and that's done using this frequency offset. Uh, previously when we selected uh, frequency offset uh, so we're going to edit the frequency offset it starts off at zero and uh, the problem was um, uh, it was difficult to see where the decade counter was or where the decade control was uh, because um, we had we were suppressing the leading zeros. Uh, so now we can fairly quickly uh, see, and if we wanted to add a, an offset, say, of 116, so we're going to have a 2 meter transverter, set it to 116, and we go back here, we go to 10 meters, uh, we're now at 29 megahertz, corresponding to 145, 
and if we go down to uh, say 28, 28 megahertz, that's 144. So we can now, um, so obviously what we're doing is generating uh, 10 meter signals out of the transverter into the antenna, but then putting that into a transverter with that um, uh, 116 megahertz offset. Uh, so the transverter output is uh, 144 to presumably 146 uh, across the 10 meter band. Uh, while I'm also here, I'll just demonstrate, uh, uh, often we use the press and turn the uh, frequency dial to change the decades. Uh, there is another way of doing that, which is to hit the either the right third or the left third of the frequency widget, uh, and we can either increase or decrease the decades that way. I'm not sure if, it, if people uh, knew that. Uh, so outside of that, there's a whole series of bug fixes. Um, we suppressed the uh, this. Uh, there was a burst of noise uh, through the radio when we went from uh, transmit to receive. That's now suppressed. Um, we used to power on in upper sideband mode, irrespective of what was displayed on the mode uh, 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 widget there. Uh, so we now power on in the actual mode that's been selected. <coughs> <coughs> uh, there was an offset on the um, uh, uh, PSK uh, that was uh, was incorrect that's now been fixed. Uh, the CW side tone you may not have noticed but the uh, uh, the side tone level that we had uh, on CW so let's go to CW and we'll send that CW sequence. Wind up the speed again, so we don't have to wait for that. If we go to uh, PSK mode and send that same sequence, the tone is about the same level, uh, where previously the PSK tone was a lot louder than the uh, CW tone. So that's now been uh, equalized. We uh, changed the uh, interface to the uh, power amplifier, that serial port, uh, which was um, getting corrupted by the RF, and we just send a few extra characters now to make sure that's in a known state uh, after we've been transmitting. And uh, uh, one more change is uh, the filter. Let's go back to uh, oh, go back to a USB mode. Um, when we're changing uh, frequency, um, we switch in band filters as we go from, say, 80 meters to 40 meters to 20 meters. And the problem was um, that transition uh, didn't happen at the same place when we were increasing frequency or decreasing pe uh, frequency. So for people who were tuning between bands, depending on whether they were increasing frequency or decreasing, uh, that filter would kick in at a different point. Uh, so we now change that so it's well defined and it operates the same at the same point irrespective of whether we're increasing or decreasing. Uh, so that's a fairly subtle change. Okay, so uh, that's it. Um, um, let me know if you find any bugs and uh, we'll see what we can do to fix them. Otherwise, enjoy and uh, I wish you all 7-3.